in a fast growing social media world, deciphering between the true, the authentic, and the honest individuals creating real disruptive changes in their industry has become very difficult. Many people are quick to flash the cards, the money, but very slow to give people the true wisdom they seek. This is why we started the Real Estate Disruptors. To bring you in front of real disruptors, changing not only the barriers in their industries, but doing it and impacting millions of lives. Welcome to the Disruptor Network. Our next disruptor was named the Pacific Coast League Strength and Conditioning Coach of the Year. His knowledge and wisdom played a big role in preparing the Tampa Bay Rays to becoming the world champions they are today. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you Joey Green. So we're just uh, we're just gonna do a warm up, dynamic warm up. And then we'll do some ground based mobility work, kind of get our bodies prepared for sprinting. And then we'll do some warm up sprints. Then we'll hook up the uh, sled, the shoot for resisted sprints. So just be all in a day's work. Five, six, seven. Where did you play college ball? Uh, so I started out, went to Alfred State College. It's a, it's a two year junior college, upstate New York. Went there, didn't really know what I wanted to do. You know, I was kind of like, I knew I wanted to do something in the physical fitness type of thing. At that time, you know, in 2001, early 2000s, they didn't have a set major or program in strength and conditioning, right? So I wanted to do like physical education. So uh, I went there two years, played baseball. And then I transferred uh, to a small school in Tennessee called Martin Methodist College. And then that's where I finished out and that's where I really started getting into strength and conditioning. Uh, my major there was uh, physical education. So I, you know, I played college baseball there. It was right before graduation. I met my uh, academic advisor, Dr. Gregory. And I was thinking I was gonna go work at Gold's Gym. He was telling me about strength and conditioning. And Dr. Gregory printed out the uh, NSCA, the National Strength and Conditioning Association website. He, and he gave me the, the information and then I, I remember taking it walking back to my dorm room I'm reading it day before graduation I said this is this is what I want to do this is it and they have a bunch of job listings of different professional teams so I applied to NFL NBA MLB NHL you went and applied. yeah and next thing you know I was packing my bags headed to Arizona for spring training in 2000 and what was the first job you got it was uh, Kansas City Royals and what, was, what did they hire you to be strength and they hired first they hired me to be a seasonal uh, strength and conditioning coach so I would you know, I'd do spring training, go to the affiliate, work there, and then afterwards, I would go home. And then I would have to do my own to, thing in the off season. A seasonal to, worker. To, yeah, I was a seasonal worker, and then I'd generate money in the off season. So I'd live with my parents, run these speed and agility camps with these young, young kids in the area, and then spring training would come. I'd fly back out to Arizona, do spring training, go to the affiliate. I did that like three years, okay. and then they were like, hey, you know what, we like this guy, he's doing good work, he brings value to the organization, let's put him on full time. I felt like I had a, a big impact on uh, not not so much a player's career, but their life. You know, their, their lifestyle, and talking to them about uh, you know proper nutrition, proper strength training, conditioning. You know, because not everybody's going to be a major league baseball player, but these kids, they're going to be someone's father. They're going to be they're going to be a husband someday. So it's the it's the values and the life skills and the character and the leadership that they learn at a low level that they can take on and help other people too. And I, again, I've been around you enough now that I've seen you at I've seen you in a ball and I've seen you in the majors now. It's funny because I never said this to you, but you treat the, 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 the kids the same way you treat the, the professionals at whatever level they are. Like somebody's a superstar, it's you know you treat everybody the same way. You're kind of you're kind of even keel. You just kind of got to treat the people you know the people you work with with respect, communicate with them, and give them your best every day, right? To show up, give them your best, and it's, it's interesting because that's again these are all 
like real life skills. Right. Like, whether it's a baseball field or whatever it is, it's a real life skills. Like, right. You gotta earn people's respect first. I talked about this a lot. Like people think that you get a title, like you're a professional strength coach now, I'm gonna order people around. It's not really that way. You have to get their trust first. You, absolutely. Well they're even gonna listen to anything. Yeah, you especially do. at the major leagues. Yeah, well I mean, and that's the thing too. Like I know you changed your organizations you went from the Royals to the, the Rays. Can you just talk to that a, a little bit like what it was like getting to an organization and, and these guys don't know you and they have their own coaches and their own strength coaches and maybe they don't want to listen to you. Yeah, so you know the first I guess first couple weeks, you just kind of feel it out, see who's who, um, you know, provide some some value, you know, insert yourself when you can, and then you know, build relationships, develop trust, get to know these guys, and then little by little, they start trusting you, believing in you. You show them a couple little things, they like that. Oh yeah, it feels good. You know, that help my they help my back, or you know, I do feel a little stronger here, or I'm moving a little better here. And then you just you just create right, that relationship, right. that trust, and then you just build on that, and it, you know it takes years and years to develop. What do you think? If you could give one thing to gain their trust, what would you think that is the best skill that you use? <sighs> yeah, I mean, find find out what makes them tick, what motivates each player, and then and then just drive into that into that piece of them. Um, you know, each each person's motivated differently, each person learns differently. Um, so you just got to figure out what makes them tick. And then, and then start targeting that. Um, and then, you know, and again, it's, the back to life. It's the same thing as right. in any job. Yeah, any job. In sales and real estate and right. marketing. You got to find out what motivates people first. Right. And then you just you just start hammering that. He spent nine years in the minor leagues before he got to be a major league strength coach. Like people just see it now, and he was he was in the World Series this year as a strength coach and strength coach of the year and all this other stuff. But like nine years riding buses in the minor leagues is a prison sentence. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like he and he and he just got up every single day and did it. I I've never heard him complain once about it. He never called me or texted me or in person said to me, "I'm sick of riding these buses." Like it never was even a case. He was just like, "I got this kid. I got this kid. I got to do this. I got to do this." It was always just like get up and do it. It's just. That kind of mentality is just, you can't teach that. I feel like you have to be born with it and you have to have it within you. And mm -hmm. all, you're right, all the successful people we meet seem to have the same traits. Mm -hmm. And especially, and you know, it's funny, like very hard work ethic, consistency, but also just genuine people. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. down to earth. Most you importantly. Know? Yeah, like jo Joey had this energy to him that I was just like, you know, you can one you can have a conversation with them, but like you just you just want to continue to you want to do everything you can for that person uh, as well. Yeah, you're, you're right. you know what's funny about him? I, I I was trying to explain him to you before you met him, and I, and I was having a hard time. And it's just like he's authentic on a different level. It's almost like he he's levitated to a different level because yeah. he wanted to do what he's telling you to do, but it's not in a way that he's like forcing you to do it. Just like you kind of want to make him happy because he's mm -hmm. so he's so giving and like mm -hmm. transparent it's it's really weird it's like this energy he gives off it's, mm -hmm. it's, it gives you an energy where you want to be like him you want to be consistent like him you want to work like him so i think that's how he succeeded like these these guys really these high level athletes really believe what he's telling them we're competing versus that other team what's that other coach doing okay well we're going to be doing this i want my guys to be better at this you know i want them i want them more prepared for the season you know, what are they doing in the off season? Make sure they're getting their sprinting in, they're getting their change of direction work in. Um, that way when they go out the field, they can, they can just relax, have fun, and let their natural ability take over. But I try to take it to another level. Yeah, no. I don't want to be good, I just want to be great yeah. at what we do. And you know, and that's, I mean, that's everything I do, right? Yeah. I want to be a great husband, a great father, you know, a great uh, conditioning coach. So You want to be great at everything. Yeah, yeah I agree, we are the best at everything. Right. So in life, I mean, you're gonna deal with failure. I mean, so just take it head on and yeah. learn from it and, and keep going. Our next disruptors founded the Sims Complete Quarterback School, a place dedicated to help young athletes take their game to the next level. NFL quarterback Matt Sims teamed up with strength and conditioning coach Joe Tagger to create and inspire the next generation of college and NFL quarterbacks.
I trained here when I was in high school in 2006, I think, and then I ended up getting hired in 2015. You know, started off as a new guy in the block, shadowing, learning a lot. Uh, Coach Rich Sadiv was the owner at the time, or soon to be owner. Did a lot of shadowing of him. He trained all the NFL guys. That's how I got to meet Matt and his father, Phil. Fast forward down the line, ended up taking over the NFL program. Started working with Matt one-on-one. -on -one. You know, I didn't play college football, but I was a hard worker and that's that's what got me to where I am today. That same mentality that I have for sports, I just applied it into my business aspect and you know that's what's helped me skyrocket and take off so fast in such a short time. Sims throws. Right, tell us about the camp that you and your father run. Uh, the camp that we're running is really simple, man. We're just trying to take all the lessons that my father and I have accumulated over these long years of being a part of this game and trying to give back those lessons to the younger uh, younger generation so they can play and improve the game even further for, for the next generation beyond them. We really stress to our guys, we're only gonna put as much effort into you as you put in, right, yourself and, and, and the rest of the group. You know, it's something that like I've really stressed the quarterbacks, which is a, you know, primarily solitary position, right, where we get too much credit or too much blame but I really have pushed a lot of the guys, right, to, to really believe in the, the community aspect of the game, right, the community aspect of sports, right, to understand that there's a collaboration happening between us, right. You know, I've learned a lot. That's helped me be a better teacher. The more that I teach, the more that I learn, and that cycle just continues. There's some, some quarterbacks who would want to throw with us every single day, right, but when you get to that point, they're gonna expect for us to be right next to them during their games. Not everybody takes advantage of, of the whole complete part, meaning a lot of guys work with me for speed and agility or strength conditioning, and then see Matt for throwing. But the ones who are the most consistent are the ones that shine, shine the brightest, I would say. Well, and yeah, they just kind of like absorb everything that we kind of have to offer and they don't you know, turn a blind eye to the, to the other things that we potentially could offer. And the cool thing is we've evolved the way we kind of run everything now. It used to be like, you know, we were the, the only coaches and now like we have group sessions where it's, you know, maybe like uh, 11, 12, 13 year olds and then our older high school athletes, college, and then like, you know, one rep, Matt will look at some of it, you know, look at one of the older kids like, hey, coach him up, tell him what he needs to fix. So it's kind of become like uh, the culture that we've always envisioned with this, meaning, you know, we're coaching everybody, but then our older are coaching our younger, our younger are learning from the older. It's a great community and a great culture that we've created so far and, you know, just getting started really. We, we provide, you know, just about all the material they need to succeed, but at the end of the day, it's gonna come down to them. And that's the tricky part. That's kind of getting that's the hardest part of the business, I would say, of what we deal with. You know, one of the main things I think we try to focus, we're just trying to get the kids into school, right? From there, you know, hey, I don't know where life's gonna take you, but if we can get you into school for free, man, like, good for you. If you don't yeah. have to pay college debt, that is awesome, right? That's, that's a head start in life. That's a, that's a burden now you don't have to worry about, right? And how do you do that? You do that by, being consistent with your training, right? Being consistent with your life, that balance you're talking about, right? Building that discipline too with your coaches, with, with your parents, with your teachers, and you know, applying all those lessons, you know, to kind of give you that head start. And it's tough because, you know, these guys are they're they're young men. And you know, we we both, you know, hey, we both have been in that situation. I'm sure you two occasionally in, in high school, you know, hey, we we've done some stupid Yeah. Shit, you know, and that's okay, but that those failures, right, are just as important. You know, Winston Churchill has a great quote, you know, success is not final, right? Failure is not fatal. The courage to continue is what counts. And that's something that I think like all three of us, all four of us here, right, we all have applied that to our lives. Nice and relax, nice and relax, throw. Step, turn, go. Damn, really good. As you guys really would say, we kind of disrupted this area with quarterback training. There's a lot of different coaches in the area, but uh, I'm a firm believer in what we do. We, we make a difference not only in like the athletes, you know, ability, but definitely reduce their likelihood of injury and just make them a more efficient mover slash thrower. 
and uh, it's showing with all our athletes now. So, and that's like a prime example of what we we instill in our in our values and our in our coaching with these athletes. There was a time where you know it might have been this this time when you got let go from the Falcons, right? Yeah. And so he went about a year with you know kind of no light at the end of the tunnel, I guess you'd say. But five days a week. You know, he's here every morning, 8 a.m. or 9.30, whenever we were training. We still got after it day in, day out, week in, week, week out. You know, he's doing his thing on the side, throwing, make sure he's ready to go. He got a phone call on a Friday or maybe a Thursday. We did like a 20 minute little walkthrough on a Friday and he got on the plane, worked out with a team, got signed on a Saturday, right? Or was that a yeah, so that was, I got signed on a Saturday afternoon, and then my first practice was Monday, and then I was playing in a preseason game on Thursday. Yes. <laughs> and I played great, and I played great, I balled out. Yes. You know, we, never, we didn't get a heads up, or Matt didn't get a heads up saying, hey, somebody might be calling, right. you know, make yeah. sure you're ready. It was, the phone call came, like, cool, we've been waiting for this, we're good. Yeah. Boom, get on that plane, like, we didn't even need to work out before he left, he was ready. But there's so many times in so many times in life, and especially with the, the the market or the population we work with, it's like, man, if I if I get the opportunity, it, that'll be a game changer. That'll be a game changer. And then all of a sudden, they get the opportunity, and I get that call, like, hey, uh, I got to run a 40 in uh, tomorrow. I'm like, listen, you know, no matter how good I am, I, whatever you're running today, you're gonna run tomorrow. <laughs> right, right. You know, so it's like you weren't ready for this opportunity. And it's the same thing, how I apply things into life now. Like, you know, yeah, I want that opportunity to come, whatever that opportunity is, but am I gonna be ready with it? And I do everything, you know, day in and day out to make sure that when that door opens, like I'm ready, I'm ready to walk through it. And we tell them straight up, and especially like when they miss workouts and, and then all of a sudden they show up two weeks later and it's like, well, why am I throwing like this? Well, we haven't seen you in a month. I don't, right. you know, I don't know what to tell you. Like, did you just think like you wake up and you know you, you throw like Matt Sims? No, this was created over 30 years. Right. So, that's like a, one of our biggest lessons that we try and instill every single day with these kids. And it's a constant reminder that like you know, the work comes first. Sometimes like the work comes way before the belief. And once they get that, it's it's sky's the limit for them. So. The times that I've been extremely selfish, right, and have thought like my stats and this and you know that, hey, that was when football was really tough. When I was like, hey man, I'm just gonna help my team do better and I'm gonna do my job the best way that I can to help my team win, that's when I had my best successes individually. Maybe if we kind of started that way more often, right, as a society, as a, as a sports program, right, as coaches or players, maybe we would be more successful more often because it's really not about like our selfish gains, but more so just the gains of everyone. And that's something that we do all the time here with our business. We care about how our players impact the rest of their teams and their teammates. You know, and occasionally we gotta snap on some guys because it is about like, oh, what about my son doing this? You know, hey, Mr. So-and-so, how about your son starts a game for his team? and then we'll worry about where he's going to college, right? How about we just get him on the field first, right? Oh, should we go to this camp? Should we post this? Should, how many likes? Let's get him to this combine. You know, hey dude, how about you just be the best quarterback on your team, and then when you make your team better, you know what, I think all that other stuff might, might, stuff might come with it, you know, and that's, that's not too much to ask for, but it is. It is a lot to ask for, because that's not sexy. You know, that's not a lot of thumbs up on Facebook. That's not a lot of hearts on Instagram. You know, you can't take a picture of that and put that in the description. We get frustrated by that, that, you know, minutia, so to speak, but we're always reminded of like the bigger goal of like what we're really trying to accomplish, right? And that's just like to better ourselves and to better the people around us. You know, that's where I think we connected so well on because you know, it was never, what we do is never about Matt or, or Joe. It's about whoever we're training in front of us. And, you know, we want to get them to their goal. You know, every, not every kid is going to make it to the NFL, but if we can help a kid get a Division One scholarship or, you know, just into college football, it's, it's worth it every day. And then they're just going to make, they're just going to apply that into life. And we know that, you know, our job was done right because they're going to be very successful in whatever they do.